Today, we're going to find the greatest All-NBA First Team ever. Using a couple different lists, sprinkling in my own opinions, I've chosen 16 All-NBA First Teams to compete in a do-or-die tournament. Now, obviously, obviously, there's going to be a ton of debate on which teams I chose to include in this video, which teams I did not. You can let me know which All-NBA First Teams I missed out on that you think should have made the cut. It's cool. Just keep in mind that I did try and use different eras, different players, and teams. It would have been boring to just have 10 LeBrons and 10 Michael Jordans, you know? That said, out of our 16 teams, we will see Steph Curry and Nikola Jokic on two of them. Michael Jordan and LeBron on three. Magic and Kobe on four. And so many other legends. It, it's going to be good. All right, let's get to it. Step one, I did a regular season sim with our 16 teams. That will serve as our seeding one through eight on both sides of the bracket. It doesn't really matter. All these teams are loaded. And here is a look at the full bracket in all its glory. Again, just 16 teams. We're going to get to an answer pretty quickly here. We'll start on the left side of the bracket. So many great matchups. I will introduce them as we go. Oh, also two points of clarification. I did turn off injuries and fatigue for this entire video. So everything's controlled by the five players that made all NBA first team. And also since these games will be played in the modern era, I did use versions of older players that have a slight three point shooting tendency. So Jerry West, Oscar Robertson, for example, they will shoot a few threes here in the matchup. Number one, 1967 versus 2006. That's a 40 year difference. In 67, the 76ers ended an eight year run of rings by the Celtics. Wilt Chamberlain would win MVP for his efforts, and he highlights the All-NBA first team with future teammates Jerry West and Elgin Baylor, Big O and Rick Barry also in tow. Steve Nash and his second straight MVP led the 06 first team, along with a legendary Kobe season, slightly older but still dominant Shaq, pre-MVP Dirk, and super young Cavs LeBron. I'm gonna try my hardest not to say like, oh, how is this team seated in this place? Because all these teams, like I just said, are great. But uh, yeah, 06 being an eight seed is surprising, although I guess not. They got absolutely curb stomped to start our video. A near 30 point win. 06. Goodbye. Wow. Shaquille O'Neal really was the weak link for 06. Only eight points on four of 11 shooting. Elgin Baylor 38 and 13 to lead 1967. We're going to see some sick stat lines in this video. Yo, I want to give a huge shout out to Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring today's video. If you haven't heard me chat about Underdog before, all you need to know is that it's simply the best fantasy sports site in the market. The NFL season is in full gear now, as is Underdog with plenty of weekly contests and drafts always ongoing, and of course, their NFL Pick'em game, which I personally can't get enough of. Now, I know there's some of you right now saying, Jay, I'm an NBA fan, would you just stop it? Stop it, okay? In addition to their NFL content popping off, Underdog Fantasy is also an extremely fertile ground for us Hoops fans, too. Leading up to the NBA season, there's countless best ball drafts happening on the daily, including the massive double dribble tournament with up to 500k in prizes. Wow. You can also make season-long Pick'em predictions for the NBA. If you've got a strong feeling on the upcoming season for stars like Luka Doncic, LeBron James, and more, jump in there, baby. Right now is an awesome time to sign up for Underdog Fantasy. If you use my code JCAN, you'll get your first deposit matched up to $100. Additionally, for week five of the NFL season, new customers get one of the mystery pick'em specials you see right here to get things rolling. Do yourself a favor and help my channel out to use code JCAN at Underdog, link down below in the description. Matchup number two, 2000 versus 2019. Team. Shaq's got a shot at redemption in this one. This time he's very much in his prime and it's not the last time we'll see a forward duo of KG and Tim Duncan while J Kidd and the glove in the backcourt. That's a lot of D. Not sure it's enough girth to hold Steph and 36 point to game James Harden on 2019 though. Wow. Remember OKC near MVP Paul George and uh, yeah, Giannis and Jokic in the front court. That's not bad. Oh no. What? I think we have another uh, blowout ladies and gentlemen and this time technically an upset, although again, the seeds we don't really care about. 2019 all over 2000. I guess that D wasn't good enough. James Harden 35, Steph 29, both were efficient. At least Shaq didn't embarrass himself in this game, 25, 15, and 6, but I did expect a bit more. Oh yeah, 2019 made 13 threes on 45%, while 2000 did not shoot them. That's going to be an interesting storyline to follow in this video. Matchup number 3, 1988 versus 2010. Oh my god, this is a great one. 88, get used to seeing a lot of all five of these dudes, Magic and Larry were still owning the league. MJ won MVP and DPOY. Young Hakeem and Chuck were both putting up numbers. While 2010 may be the peak All-NBA team for folks around my age, Finals MVP era Kobe with prime Dwayne Wade in the backcourt. MVP LeBron and scoring champ Kevin Durant up front. Peak DPOY Dwight Howard anchoring things. Let's go. Okay, 1988 is the Rockets in this simcast and they were number one on most lists I saw ranking the All-NBA teams. Can they live up? 
to that billing? Oh, baby, maybe not. They are only up six. Can they close this thing out in the clutch? Not Larry Bird missing a hook shot. I knew it, dude. I knew I love this 2010 team. They are so good. Maybe not big enough to compete. KD on a step. What was <laughs> KD? What an awesome shot. I love that animation 2K24. It's so beautiful. Actually, come to think of it, I thought 2010 might be small, but uh, 1988 is rocking out with Hakeem and Chuck. Yeah, never, yeah, yeah. No, Chuck is too big for 2010. What a putback. I'm kind of shocked with both LeBron and Kobe and honestly, Dwayne Wade out there. That young KD's getting the looks. Hakeem's going to go against DPOY Dwight. All his defensive prowess getting clamped. Hakeem does not care though. That's why he's the GOAT, man. 2010 gave him a run for their money, but shot only three of 14 from three. If you're going to attempt a bunch more, you got to make them. Matchup number four, 2003 versus 2021. Along with 88, many rankings lists would say that 03 is the greatest all NBA team ever. Another Duncan Garnett Shaq front court all still in their prime. T-Mac Kobe pairing is insane. No pure point guard, but do they need it? 2021, the post bubble season, Jokic ascended and won his first MVP. Giannis was dominant as ever. Luka as a 21 year old tore up the league. Kawhi was healthy enough to qualify and Steph Curry had simply his greatest scoring season ever. That's nuts. 2003 had the most stacked front court we will see in this video, but 2020 in the modern era should have had the upper hand. Yeah, and looks like that's true. 2003. Ah, man. I want to say they aren't built for the modern era because really they weren't, but that was no excuse for 1988. T-Mac 32 and 10 leading the way for 03. Oh, Shaq has just not impressed me in this. Video. And Kobe 17 and 12. I guess he was playing point guard. But 2021 was simply too prolific from deep, but where was the defense? 03, you were supposed to muck it up. I feel I have to show 03 one last time as they're eliminated. The problem is Duncan Garnett, Shaq, amazing, legendary, Hall of Fame bigs, but negative amounts of court spacing. Plus, T-Mac and Kobe weren't three-point snipers. So anyways, that's why they lost. Okay, so what we just saw, the 1967 All-NBA first with a big dub, then 2019, a modern era team led by Steph Curry. Then we had 1988, arguably the GOAT team win, and uh, 2021, another Steph Curry-led modern team. Both those modern teams also led by Giannis Jokic. You know what I'm saying, but a good mix. I'm glad Glad we didn't just see the modern-ish era dominate. We got some OG teams advancing, and we got plenty more OG teams to come on the right side of the bracket. Now let's get to it. Starting with matchup number five, 1991 versus 1971. Another Magic Michael MJ backcourt on 91. Carl Malone averaged just shy of 30 and 12 for the season. Wow. Chuck and Admiral in the front court. Dang, dude. 1971, another aforementioned OG season. I included mainly to honor Prime Bucks career who won MVP and led Milwaukee to a ring. He's joined by Jerry Dub, John Havlicek, Dave Bing, Billy Cunningham. Yeah, not the strongest squad, but maybe Kareem carries? Oh, yes, sir. Maybe Kareem carries indeed coming to fruition. His 71 All-NBA first team up one with under two minutes left. MJ in the clutch though, pulling up from... Whoa, MJ Brick Dutch. Okay, MJ. Dave Bing is the lowest overall player, I think, in this entire video. But you know what? Go off, King. Dropping a dime to Kareem, who got great position on Admiral. I like that. All right, a couple free throws from Magic. This game is still a one-point game. Kareem's wide open. Oh, my word. Dave Bing is throwing flashy passes. All right, 71's got the aura. Oh, oh, Jerry West. Jerry West in the corner with the dagger. Oh, my word. 71 has the aura, dude. They're shooting three. Freeze in the clutch like they should be. Amazing, dog. That's a big W. And it was a team effort, too. Kareem did work, but uh, everybody contributed. Huge shot from Jerry West, too. Matchup number six, 1995 versus 1987. 87 is the underdog? I included 95 mainly to honor Scottie Pippen, who was dominant even with a retired MJ. Another Malone, D-Rob, front court. John Stockton makes a team. And Penny, who doesn't love some prime Penny? 1987 is flat out ridiculous. Maybe the best version of Magic Johnson ever, Mike and Larry, of course, young Hakeem again, and Kevin McHale. All right, he's the weakling. Wow, wait a second. Wait a second. I'm not even going to jump into this game. 95's got it. It's not a blowout, but they are going to handle business against 1987. What? 14 point win? MJ on 1987. He was still young, but does that excuse only 21 points on 6 of 14 shooting? Scotty Pippen a near triple double. I mean, he wasn't great. Carl uh, Malone leading the way for 19. 
1995. There you go. Matchup number seven. We're going back to 1965 as they'll take on 1984. All the OG teams simulated well. In 65, Bill Russell managed to oust Wilt and make all NBA first along with the logo, Elgin Baylor, underrated legend, and a couple young Cincinnati Royals. Nice. 84, another Magic Larry duo, this time pre-MJ in the league. Isaiah Thomas getting a look. Older but still dominant Kareem on the Lakers and the low-key prolific Bernard King. Shout out to the Knicks. No, seriously, one of my all-time favorite NBA tidbits is that Bill Russell, Bill freaking Russell, only made three All-NBA first teams because Wilt Chamberlain simply owned him. Wait, a bunch of people are going to get mad. No, Wilt Chamberlain did not own Bill. He owned Bill in terms of All-NBA first teams. He owned that spot on the first team. Anyways, now I'm rambling. Celtics fans are angry at me. You know what I meant. Brother Jerry West is dominating this video 40 and 12 as yes, 1965 did win. And finally, matchup number eight, our oldest team, 1961 against 2013. A 50 year difference. Let's go. 61 led by Prime. His numbers are too ridiculous to believe. The aforementioned Wilt Chamberlain, a couple old white bobs putting in work, rookie Big O, and again, Elgin Baylor. Man, I love that dude. And the final team will introduce 2013. Should have been unanimous MVP LeBron. Duncan and Kobe turning back the clock with awesome seasons. Prime Lob City CP3 and fully ascended OKC Durant. This team is awesome. If we're being honest with ourselves, these games are being played in the modern era. 2013 with LeBron and all them dudes should have the upper hand here? Nah, nah, this is out of control. I mean, I get it. These OG teams simulated well in the regular season, including 61, so I shouldn't be shocked. But again, this is the modern era. How? 2013? Bro, I mean, like, they got dominated. That's a 30-point loss. What happened here? Oh, oh, what? What? Uh, may I direct your attention to the free throw? <laughs> they shot 47. Uh, okay, well, yeah, sure. Why not? Oh, my gosh. Elgin Baylor, 45 points. Wilt had 39, and both of them just lived at the free throw line? To be fair, LeBron had an awesome game, 41 and 15, but he was playing the four, Tim Duncan the five. I think they were just too small. Like, they just got bodied by those old men. Old man strength, man. Okay, so up top, we had 1971 upset, 1991, an eight seed advancing as well, 1995. Then in the bottom right region, we'll have a battle of 1960s teams. Oh, and we'll get Bill Russell versus Wilt Chamberlain. Let's go. And all together, I'm just in shambles this video because we've had all three LeBron James-led teams eliminated. All four Kobe Bryant-led teams ousted. We only have one MJ team left. Man, the agenda does the GOAT legacy conversations after this video, dog. But let's crush our Elite 8 matchups, beginning with 1967, led by Wilt, taking on 2019. Steph Curry, Giannis, and Jokic have two teams still remaining. Can they get it done with James Harden and Paul George? Well, the jury is very much still out. We got a tie game under two minutes left. And this game, because 1967 is a one seed, is being played on their home court in LA with no three-point line. This is so gnarly to see Jerry West working with Wilt. This was before or they were teammates, but both were in their prime. Big O, Oscar Robertson, speaking of which, working from the post on James Harden. Ah, he gets super deep. Yo, he just worked the beard defensively. That's crazy. Now Jerry's gonna try cooking Steph. Just kidding, he hits Elgin. Oh, I think that's a three. He Yo, the OGs are killing it in the clutch from deep. Elgin Baylor, what a legend. If the OGs are able to have Wilt Chamberlain, Bill Russell, etc., and also make threes at a reasonable rate, I mean, they're unstoppable. Look at the free throws again. James Harden put up basically what he averaged in 2019, but it wasn't enough. Steph, Giannis, Jokic, that core has a chance at redemption right away, but uh, 1988, yeah, that team is unbelievable on paper. Let's do okay, it. Okay, nobody panic. We might actually have a modern day team succeed here. Like, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but 2021 is up three late in this game. Literally like one basket and a couple stops put this uh, puts this thing away. Luka shooting a two and missing. Magic could go to work on Steph. MJ could dominate. Luca, they've got mismatches everywhere. What in the world? Jokic, he ain't defend. Oh, he did defend MJ, but Chuck, another clutch rebound and put back. Is this the same Charles Barkley as earlier? Nah, right now we are teetering on having no teams from like the past 40 years in the final four. Good pass, good dunk, Nicole. We've yet to see this 2021 team get a stop. Old heads are like, yeah, this is what we're talking about. No defense in the modern era and it continues. Magic just hit what could be a dagger and if not, he secured 1988 the two for one. Yo, they are smart. They are the old man. Steph, that's clean. That's a clean look, Steph Curry. Thank you for doing something. Showing out for the modern era, my guy. Oh, my word. Magic's throwing a lob. <laughs> 
Magic to MJ, a lob in the clutch. Now, me personally, Stefan, the co and co, I would not take that type of disrespect. I'd go get a game winner, right? You did, yeah. Yeah, that's right, Steph. That's why I'm wearing this Warrior shirt. I knew you'd come through, Magic. If you hit that, <laughs> he almost hit that. He almost hit that. <laughs> okay, I'd like to say I'm now composed. Yes, 2021, a nice victory. They shot a bunch of threes, made a lot of them, and 1988 didn't. That seems to be the difference in this one. But Steph Curry with 43 and 7, a huge three late, then the eventual game game winner that was awesome okay now 1995 isn't necessarily modern but if they lose that would mean three of our four final four teams are from the vietnam war era and i don't think we want that well yeah i definitely reverse jinxed it by saying all i just said uh 1995 loses obviously 1971 another big dub but you know what i kind of like to see kareem dominating that is why i put him in this video carrying his team and it's not nam but uh pretty good battle here uh bill russell versus wilt chamberlain what am I even saying at this point which 1960s team advances well right now it's 1965 in celtics green with the upper hand up six bob Cousy misses wilt on the glass are a four point game it's literally so annoying that 2k changed the scoreboard overlay as elgin's gonna get free throws here in the clutch because now it doesn't even give me the abbreviation so i can know which team is which it's very confusing especially when i have a bunch of the same players on both sides okay it's 1965 again in the boston celtics green bill russell squad it's Elgin. Is he about to hit another dagger? Ooh, I thought Elgin had another dagger in him. Not for 1965. Bob Cousy back in transition for 61. Kicking back. Elgin's putting up a shot. But yeah, why not? Elgin's are running wild in this video. Court spacing looking atrocious as usual. Jerry West putting up nope. a mid-range jumper. He missed it. Bob Cousy handling rock for 1961. Inside to Wilt. They're bringing the double again. Wilt doesn't go up over Bill. Bill with the defensive stand. Oh my word. That was amazing. And for now, Bill gets the last laugh on Wilt Chamberlain as he advances out of the bottom right region. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the 8th seed 1971 All-NBA first team from the top right region. Our one lone modern day rep, the 2021 All-NBA first advances. And yes, there's still Wilt Chamberlain alive here in this video. 1967. That's a great squad. And altogether, that means we're into our final four, two great matchups. And we still have the potential for Wilt versus Bill Russell in the final championship game. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Who's going to advance? Advance. Up first, 1967, they are the favorites. They were a one seed, a trio of 96 overalls. Big O, Jerry West, Wilt Chamberlain, Rick Barry, and uh, Elgin. Man, I keep forgetting how many Elgin Baylors there are in this video. I think on paper, I do like the lower seeded 2021 All-NBA first team. Giannis, Jokic, Steph, you can't beat that top three. Luka, I, maybe he's a defensive liability, but Kawhi is there. It's so strong. This was also our last battle of old versus new, a near 50-year gap between teams teams would that play into the outcome I I, I don't, I, I guess not. I, I guess not. Because once again, I would think the modern era would benefit from playing in the modern era. But no, not not meant to be. Did not play out that way. Will Chamberlain, 33, 18, and 5. He didn't shoot efficiently. But nobody on 2021 was able to truly get loose. Luca Steph held relatively in check. But here we go. The second half of our final four. Bill Russell, 98 overall leading the way. Jerry West again. Big O Elgin. Man, which of these OG teams is the best on paper it's definitely not this 1971 crew who again i only included for kareem's sake but uh they're getting it done with slightly older jerry west also helping out okay does kareem's cinderella run continue or does bill russell make him look like an absolute fraud uh oh uh oh there is a hall of fame center on fraud alert right here but it's not kareem he's got a seven point lead over bill in 1965 okay it's getting serious they go in the post working on old man jerry fair enough he worked him over i really did did think that this Kareem led 71 squad on paper when I put it together was the worst. They simulated poorly, but look at them dominating Kareem. If they get like one stop here, maybe they need two, but one stop at least. Oh, there it is. Their offensive foul on Bill Russell. I told you he was a fraud. Kareem backing down on Bill. The sky hook over Bill Russell, and it's simply greater than Bill's D. That's crazy. Wait a minute. Yo, Bill Loki clamped Kareem 15-12. That's it. 
it, but uh, he got the last laugh with that sky hook for the win. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the 1971 All-NBA First Team sky hooked their way into history once again, or will Wilt, Jerry West, and the 1967 crew take them down? As the higher seed, 1967 gets home court advantage in LA, but at this point, why would anybody doubt 1971 and their dominant run? No! Oh, man. I'm so... I, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at this result. 1967 is running away with this championship game. I wanted a clutch finish, though. This is a bit anticlimactic, but hey, anyone who doubted Kareem in 1971 was right to do so as 1967 came in, shot a million free throws, and dominated. Jerry West led the way with 38 and 10. Elgin, a triple double. Wilt on fraud alert, two for 10, carried to a W. Oh, and Kareem was also bad, 18 and 15. Neither Hall of Fame big was able to pull through for their respective all NBA first team. But that simply did not matter as Wilt Chamberlain's 1967 crew was strong enough to run their way through the bracket on route to winning this championship. Is this five man unit from 1967 the greatest all NBA first team ever? I don't really think so, but according to 2K in this situation, maybe. Let me know what you guys think of the result and what the greatest all NBA first team is down below. It's probably 2003 or 1988, but uh, yeah, 1967 pulling through. Who would have guessed it?